students today we will discuss on posterior palatal seal or the pps so the contents we will be discussing in today's class will be the definition of pps the functions of the posterior palatal seal area the anatomic and the physiology considerations the parts of the pps that's basically the anterior and the posterior vibrating lines the methods of recording your pps and what are the errors uh, that you can see in recording the pps and in the denture coming to the definition gpt defines pps as the soft tissues along the junction of the hard and soft palates on which pressure within physiologic limits of uh, of the tissues can be applied by a denture to aid in retention of the denture so it is a junction between the hard and soft palate okay where you can apply force within physiologic limits by the denture which will help in retention of the denture or to retain the denture in place coming to the function retention of the maxillary denture it reduces gag reflex that is if you have extend the denture beyond the pps you will end up having a gag reflex so the correct recording will give you reduce the gag reflex it reduces food accumulation beneath the posterior aspect of the denture and also the patient discomfort can be reduced when contact occurs between the dorsum of the tongue and the posterior end of the denture base coming to the anatomy and physiology consideration pps can be divided into two separate but confluent areas you cannot actually separate it to but just for the convenience of knowing the pps you can mark it as two so consider this to be the maxillary ridge this is your maxillary tuberosity this being the maxillary tuberosity and you have your rugae areas here okay and here you have your hamlar notch all right so now which is the posterior palatal seal now posterior palatal seal is the area which extends medially from one tuberosity to the other so medially that is across from one tuberosity to the other so this is the area which it crosses okay that is your posterior palatal seal what is the pterygo maxillary seal it extends through the pterygo maxillary notch continuing 2 to 3 to 4 mm anterolaterally approximating the mucogingival junction so one maxillary tuberosity to the other maxillary tuberosity is this posterior palatal seal whereas what extends in the pterygo maxillary notch this area okay pterygo maxillary notch antro that is anterolateral anterior and lateral anterolateral okay so that is your pterygo maxillary seal coming to the anterior and posterior vibrating line so ideally we all know pps is in a cupid's bow shape so you have a cupid's bow shape this is how a cupid's bow looks like so what the cupid bow is the anterior vibrating line and this will be your posterior vibrating line okay the pps lies between the anterior vibrating line and the posterior vibrating line so this area that falls in between these two lines is your pps the anterior vibrating line is defined as an imaginary line which is located at the junction of the attached tissues overlying the hard and soft palate and the movable tissues of the immediately adjacent soft palate so so that is the anterior vibrating line how do you record the anterior vibrating line there is a technique called as the valsalva manio technique you ask the patient to blow through the nose that is blow out through the nose and while they are blowing through the nose you block the nostrils that technique is called as your valsalva manio technique so the valsalva manio technique is used to record the anterior vibrating line now in the patient's mouth the anterior vibrating line can also be uh, visualized by asking the patient to say ah the word ah in short burst okay you cannot extend the words you can have you have to ask the patient to say ah as short burst so there are two techniques to record the anterior vibrating line one is the short burst of ah and the second is the valsalva manio technique due to the projection of the posterior nasal spine the anterior vibrating line is not a straight line rather 
it is having a cupid's bow so the cupid's bow when you say the anterior vibrating line now this is formed due to the presence of the posterior nasal spine so this is because of the posterior nasal spine okay coming to the posterior vibrating line as i mentioned when you see the pps the posterior vibrating line is a straight line now please remember the anterior vibrating line and the posterior vibrating line both are not present inside the patient's mouth they are just imaginary lines you only have the pps so for us easily to understand where it is located we are imagining two lines between which the pps will fall okay the posterior vibrating line is an imaginary line at the junction of the aponeurosis of the tensor villi palatini muscle and the muscular portion of the soft palate it represents the demarcation between the part of the soft palate that has limited or shallow movement during the function and the remainder of the soft palate that is markedly displaced during functional movements the methods used to mark the pps are three techniques the conventional approach the fluid wax technique and the arbitrary scraping of the master cast so what is your conventional approach this procedure is done after the impression is made and the master cast is poured okay so first you make a trial denture base maybe you can use a shellac or a uh, cold cure denture base then the patient is asked to sit in an upright position and the mouth is rinsed the pps area the area from the hamla notch to the hamla notch is wiped with gauze you take a tea burnisher take a tea burnisher and the location of the hamla notch is taken now how do you run this you run the t over the ridge from the uh, maxillary tuberosity and when you go posterior to the maxillary tuberosity you find a dip where it falls so that is going to be your hamula notch okay so you start marking from that point now you mark from this point you ask the patient to say ah 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 short burst and you mark your anterior vibrating line starting from your hamula notch to the hamula notch using an indelible pencil okay and then you ask the patient to say ah on a long note and mark the posterior vibrating line now the trial base is taken and it is reinserted into the patient's mouth uh, so that this marking which is placed in the mouth is marked onto the denture base depending on that this is transferred to the master cast and then the border of the denture is trimmed accordingly so this is what i mentioned the anterior vibrating line is marked at the junction of the hard and the soft palate using a pencil now the area between the anterior and the posterior vibrating line is scraped in the master cast to a depth of about 1 to 1.5 mm on either side of the mid palatine raphe in the region of the mid palatine raphe it is only scraped about 0.5 to 1 mm of depth now the posterior border of the palatal seal should be tapered so that it blends with the palatal tissues the entire border of the pps resembles the shape of a cupid's bow the markings of the anterior and the posterior vibrating line is transferred onto the cast and it is scraping is done what is the advantage of using this technique the trial base will itself will become more retentive and this will produce a more accurate maxillo mandibular relation that is when you take the jaw relation your denture base is much more stable the patient will be able to experience the retentive qualities of the denture base the new denture bearer will be able to realize the posterior extent of the denture when you give a trial it's very important that the patient is able to understand the retention and also the posterior limits of the denture so that they are prepared to receive the new denture coming to the disadvantages now this being it is not a physiologic technique and therefore it depends upon the accurate transferring process and any minute errors can cause the error in the recording potential for over compression of the tissues is more because we are arbitrarily scraping on the cast the arbitrary scraping technique is an entirely different technique though in this technique also in the conventional approach also we are scraping the cast to give the damning effect